In general, the two-minute dance, the first dance, it's not going to be the only dance you do that night on your wedding night. Well, most people, I guess some people don't dance at the wedding, but usually you, that's what you do, right? <laughs> uh, so it makes perfect sense to feel a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more prepared. And of course, I'm always happy to help. So sometimes. Um, maybe couples know how to dance to modern songs and top 40 music but then they tell me oh we're going to have a wedding where there's going to be a band and they will play Motown and we don't know how to dance to that so then we work on a specific genre, genre of music, specific um, dance skill set and you know once you learn how to dance you can use it at any party not only your wedding but you know, whenever you're invited as a guest, you already know how to dance. So, yeah. Looking forward to my evening classes. Uh, I just have one. <laughs> but uh, it's okay, because I'm tired. This other side is pretty hard. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but, you know, we we're going to be switching. We're going to go right back to the class. So it goes better. Yeah. Once we practice, yeah. Yeah. maybe practice the... Um, the left side more. You can use the quality bar for, so you don't have to think about balance. Uh, so we know this side and we know this way. So like this. Yeah. In one more, just one side for now, just left. And yeah, knees bent. And front and back and front and back. Don't let the foot come too far out when you're switching from front to back. So keep the Close. And here you see my knee is bent and your leg is like this. So keep it close. Because it's okay when you do it slow, 
but when we have to go on every day, it's going to be hard to keep up. Eric bought 30 classes and this is one of his first classes and then we'll see how he looks at the end of 30 classes. Right now he looks very sweaty, right Eric? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit less sweaty but also tired because the shuffling is tough. Alright guys time to talk about triple groove. Some of you already know it, those of you who are my students. I've been teaching this movement I think for the past two weeks. Um, I included it in first dance routines, I taught this movement individually. Um, well it's a type of groove you can do by yourself but you can also do it with the partner. So I tried both versions. And it just seems to be super challenging for people. It doesn't it look like anything technical. It looks like this. Today I have a student coming in for 30 minutes just to learn that move. <laughs> we tried him in class and he wrote me this big email saying that no matter how he's practicing, it just doesn't come out right. He looks stiff, um, he's not sure what to do, no matter what he does, it doesn't come out looking right. So today he booked a 30 minute session and he's coming to Brooklyn, to my Brooklyn studio, and we're only are going to practice this one move for 30 minutes. One and two. So let's figure out what happens with each of those counts, right? What is one? One is knee bend, pelvis back. Pelvis back, not necessarily you can, or we said just a knee bend. Okay. One. What is end? Straight legs, pelvis forward. Good. And then the last one is torso forward. Torso. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And I'm trying to see what leg are you finishing on. So you don't want to be too far on this front leg. Okay. Right? So more or less my body weight stays in the middle, even after the last portion. Oh. Even after so. this one. Yeah, because if you start putting the weight uh, more forward, then it's going to um, yeah. throw your balance or it will make you exaggerate the movement because you are trying to get onto the right leg. that I have a dance studio at home. Look at this. <coughs> it's my custom dryer. It's working. 